Thank you for being here. My first question is, you are a veteran in the business. Could you please tell us how was the internet back then? How was building a digital startup business back in the 90s and in the early 2000s? Well, first of all, thank you for everybody and thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, I'm an old fart in the internet, uh, in digital entrepreneurship and a few other things. So, being a millennial entrepreneur in the last millennium, uh, I, I have a little bit of uh, an historical perspective. Uh, but in reality, and, and we will be discussing this, uh, not much has changed in the fundamental reality of uh, uh, building innovation and building startups. I think that uh, when uh, the whole thing started, uh, it was easier. Uh, it, it was easier to do things back then, not because it was easier in general. Uh, when you do something that's completely new, it's always uncharted territory. Uh, doing a lot of things and, and finding your own way. But it was a simpler competitive system and it was really the very, very beginning. So the, the level of understanding and the level of quality of what, uh, of what uh, was necessary to do business uh, was almost non-existent. So it, it, it was gentler for uh, all the uh, mistakes that you could do. Uh, now the it's worth compared to today and, and progressively over the years uh, the competitive system has become uh, much more global bigger rewards uh, but um, the threshold for competition has grown up uh, a lot so in a way yeah it was easier one of the things for which it was easier is that at the very very beginning hardly anyone was building a global business mm -hmm. so doing something as I did uh, in the first half I did and in a way also in the second one, uh, there was only local, uh, was, was simpler, a smaller competitive environment uh, uh, and, and so uh, an, easier, uh, an easier level of competition and, uh, and also a much smaller potential reward because the behemoth of uh, uh, the internet uh, that uh, were born with the digital uh, uh, revolution that we know today could not be what they are if they were not global. Uh, so reward and, and risk, uh, difficulties and, uh, and opportunities. Carlo, what was your biggest mistake in your career? Right. Mistakes. <laughs> no one. Uh, no one. One thousand. Uh, we discussed this, this question before. Uh, and I'm not being arrogant in saying that, um, and the explanation and the reason is that I don't think that you could really define what a mistake is unless it's a really big uh, and, and very stupid mistake. And luckily, uh, I, I didn't do anything so big and stupid uh, uh, so far. Um, the thing is, uh, what you do in the search of Whatever is the uh, whatever is the, the, the thing you're trying to find uh, is uh, reached gone. So the um, the process of trial and error, uh, by definition, uh, requires that you do a lot of mistakes. So I think that the problem is not try to avoid mistake, but the problem is. Uh, having a model uh, that allows you to do as many mistakes as you can, as early as you can, because the earlier you do mistakes, the, the less is the cost, the less is the uh, financial, organizational, and time cost of uh, doing it. Um, but within a model, within the, the search of a model, uh, that makes every single mistake uh, one step forward uh, in understanding. So, yes, I did 1,000 mistakes. Uh, what I like to think as much as possible is that I learned something out of each of them and it would be almost uh, 
Right? It's nonsensical to think, uh, what if I never did any of them? I, I, any, anything that has happened after the first mistake and the second and the uh, 11th and the 100th uh, mistake has been uh, because of what uh, were the mistakes that, that gave a, uh, teach me a lesson and, and, and allowed me to, to proceed. So exactly as uh, it's not a question of failure, it's a question of search, the research of something. So the big mistake would be not having a model, not having a map, not having an assumption that you want to try when you do things. Because in that case, uh, it's not uh, that you don't do mistake. But you pay for the mistake, you have nothing back. And that would be a stupid thing. So making mistakes as a method. Making mistakes as a method because you're doing something that nobody has ever done before. Uh, and even in doing that, of course, doing all the mistakes you're supposed to do because you're, some, you're doing something new. Uh, it doesn't apply to doing stupid mistakes that you could avoid just because you didn't do your homework. Uh, one of the things that I said uh, were different uh, back in the old days and today is that between then and now, I don't know, 25 years have passed and a lot of uh, uh, people have uh, uh, worked on uh, the history of what has been done, trying to distill lessons, uh, patterns, uh, uh, dynamics in how these things evolve, and, they, and this corpus of understanding is now available. So it would be really stupid to do a mistake just because you didn't study it's like saying in any discipline, today you go, you all go to college, you do your own thing. At the end of the college, probably, I don't know, you reached uh, what was uh, actual uh, 100 years ago. And then uh, you go in graduate school and you start uh, coming near to what is the present day. And the reality happens uh, somewhere else. If you haven't done all this and you were starting from scratch. It's like saying uh, we would not be studying uh, Higgs bosom. We would be launching uh, balls uh, down uh, slopes like Galileo was doing uh, in the 1500s. Uh, and from there, getting to where we are today, it would be a little, a little longer for one single lifetime. So I think that's the, 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 the key thing. Now, there are a lot of things that you can study. And there is no excuse in not uh, uh, in not studying, in not worrying, in not uh, challenging everything you're doing uh, by using all the, all the resources uh, that are available. Also because everybody else, if they are good, they are doing that. So it's just your handicap. So do you think you have grown wiser? Do you, le do you make less mistakes now than uh, back then with Virgilio? I've certainly grown wiser because otherwise I would just have grown old, older. Um, but um, no, I don't think I do less mistakes. I think, uh, yes, in a way I have developed, uh, and that's typically what happens, uh, once you do a lot of exercises, a lot of uh, uh, mus muscle memory, a lot of uh, non uh, non-rational understanding of things. Wiser means you start to think uh, you can see things that are not right uh, before you really rationalize why they aren't. And that gives you a little bit of, uh, uh, of uh, an advantage from having to go through all the things. But yeah, that's exactly. I have much less energy than a younger person, but a little bit more experience uh, uh, so it cost me a little less to understand certain things. Um, so it's sort of a balance, and yes. Uh, but this is just in general terms. Uh, because the key thing is all, all we're doing is in a domain that is constantly changing. If it was not constantly changing, uh, we would have no, no possibility to, to do anything, let the side disrupt. So if it is constantly changing, everything you know will be old uh, in a couple of years. It's only the overall experience, it's, it's the pattern, uh, not uh, the specific instance of something that, that is what uh, gives you the advantage. It's understanding 
more general questions, more general dynamics of what you're doing rather than the specific things. Uh, I've been doing things in media. I believe that three years after I did that, uh, what I did know was worth nothing. If it wasn't like that, uh, then the, the world would have stopped uh, back in the 2000. And everything I've known um, with the startup in gaming. If today a startup say, uh, journalist coming to me, ah, can you comment on what's going on in gambling in Italy? I have no idea at all. That is. Three years after that, I didn't know what was uh, going on. Uh, I would be just the old guy, you know, the old guy saying, ah, in my time. Uh, and all those things. What has remained the same and, uh, and that the only thing they accumulate uh, going forward is uh, this general idea of, uh, of uh, being uh, even more cynical, especially cynical with your own ideas, even more challenging, uh, because you realize that the only survival is, is trying to kill everything you think, you, you believe in, because if you don't do it, somebody else will do it. So better to know in, in, in advance because you're doing it and then rethink uh, what you think is uh, the, the, the right thing to do. So I believe that's a process. Carlo, could you tell us a moment in which you said, OK, with this idea, with this whatever, I'll conquer the world. I'll make billions and I'll be the most successful entrepreneur in the world. Yeah, and grow my hair back. Um, yes, I remember many times uh, I thought that. Um, I would say almost every single day. Uh, in the morning, I was very certain of what I was doing. And, uh, and, and by the night, I was already trying to kill everything. And I have to say that everything uh, I have done, anybody have done. <clears throat> when they tell you the story, it's always very logical. You follow a path from one point to the other, to the other, because with, in hindsight, you see all these things following a logical, uh, a logical path. Uh, but in reality, it was not like that. Uh, every day you had a big idea. That was gonna be the real, the real killer. Uh, and then uh, one week later it was something else, and one month later it was something else, and one year later it was completely different. And I actually believe that all these things, uh, you do an idea, then I do a pivot, you do another thing like that, that's bullshit. You just continuously evolve uh, what you're thinking. So yes, every single day I'm very certain that what I'm doing now is the best uh, I have available uh, as a strategy, as of uh, whatever is Friday. And I'm pretty sure that by Monday it will have changed a little. And I think that's the only thing that can help you survive. It's like, what would they say, the gazelle wakes up and uh, starts running because the lion and all those things. So, yes, I've been very certain of many things every single day and I've changed it uh, later on. You told me earlier that um, Soldo was the most difficult startup you have ever built. Could you tell us why? Well, because it's now and it's not 20 years ago. Uh, because it's global uh, and it's not local. Uh, because uh, everybody is trying to do the same and there are many more people trying to do the same than they used to be. Uh, because the reward could be bigger and that brings a lot of people, capital uh, mm -hmm. and energies into the same uh, arena uh, competing for the same prize. Uh, because the, the threshold for doing things right, as I said, uh, has, has grown a lot. Uh, because you cannot say, yeah, I'm doing something financial, I'm doing SaaS, uh, and I've not studied all the logic of the matrix on how you measure SAS, what are the dynamics, how, how are the acquisition costs versus lifetime revenues versus certain things. Now you, you could have done a master in these things and just be at the starting point of doing, uh, uh, of, doing a, of building a company. So that means that uh, in reality, everybody is actually accessing the same information. Everybody is 
uh, is using all this, and then that raises the the uh, the competition level uh, significantly. Um, so, the more you are in a global environment, uh, uh, the more people compete with you, the more difficult, by definition, it is, as it should be, uh, so that the best one that comes out uh, is actually much better than uh, what was the champion of the time. So, yeah, I am like the guy when they do the, the NBA thing and they call the old player there, uh, all that, and say, yeah, in my time I was a young boy and I jumped uh, uh, with basketball. But if you, if you look at the athlete running in the Olympics or in um, the, those things, uh, uh, I'm not a sport fan, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but in, in reality, those running the 100 meters in the 30s, <clears throat> and you see Usain Bolt today, it's like an extraterrestrial. It's not human. Compared to that, it's like uh, a guy from another planet. But today we consider that the normal level of competition for that thing. But the difference with them is that you still play basketball and run for the Olympics, and, and, and you still do, do that quite well. Well, <laughs> that I don't know. Drew uh, is still out, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but I, I play, uh, let's say, a middle-aged man sports. I could not play uh, basketball. I could not play competitively in the 100 meters in the Olympics. I would be out of the thing. It's like saying, can you play golf competitively up to a certain age? Uh, yes. Can you... Can you be a 50-year-old uh, running competitively 100 meters? No way. So, yes, I, we, me, because actually everything I do, it's me, my people I do with me, my, my colleagues, uh, team, co-founders, friends, uh, and all the people working with me, many of which, obviously, uh, are not really 20 years old, but uh, have been... Uh, have been doing this, uh, we've been doing this together for, uh, for some time. We actually choose an environment and a specific project that makes sense. If I were to come here and say, guys, I will invent the next millennial social network that will break the reality of, uh, I don't know, interpersonal communication between 18 to 20 year old, it would be a joke. I have no idea. My kids, that my son is 20 year old, possibly he knows things. I barely understand certain things. That's why we choose a very boring and very, very complex environment like FinTech, where you have to understand legal regulation, technology, mobile, uh, big transactional system, and a lot of other things, because that's the field where that, that being wiser or more experienced, having seen many things, uh, is actually an advantage. But if I were to say I will invent the next Instagram, no way. For your generation, the biggest revolution was the internet, the so-called dot-com revolution. Can you imagine, can you foresee a similar revolution for the young entrepreneurs of today? Something that can be seen as a whole paradigm shift like the internet was back in the 90s. It's very gentle to say that. For my generation, the revolution was personal computer. Uh, that was way before the internet, and then the internet came and, and a lot of other things. And yes, I totally believe that uh, it's going to be, history is going to repeat itself. Uh, the personal computer was, and even the very nerdy personal computer of the very beginning was a revolution for some. Then it became a revolution for a lot of more. I remember having seen the first uh, alpha version of QuickTime animating a 64 by 64 bits video and it was a revolution and then there was a CD-ROM that was a revolution and then networking was a revolution and then the internet and then uh, it seemed that after the year 2000 you had everything, you had search engines, portals, uh, uh, e-commerce and all that, uh, everything had invented by then, no? except the social networks, uh, mobile, and a lot of, of, of those things. And certainly, there will be more disruption and more things. Uh, oh, at the minimum, I hope so. Otherwise, the world will be very boring. But the reality is, yes, it will be. 
uh, it will be like that. Sometimes innovation, because of these characteristics, is not going to be enough to, um, to allow for real innovation to flourish in the market. Sometimes you need the regulatory, uh, uh, a regulatory uh, intervention, because if you end up in a monopoly situation, the paradox is capitalism is what drives most, but to maximize capitalism return, the best situation is actually a monopoly, because that gives you the maximum return for those shareholders and the less amount of opportunity for everybody else. So yes, I hope it, it will be like this. For sure, technology, cultural uh, evolution, and many other elements, uh, many other uh, trends uh, will be continuously fueling uh, change. Sometimes, perhaps, you will need uh, also uh, social intervention. It happened uh, every time, even even uh, uh, with the oil baron uh, in the 1800s in the U.S. Uh, the, the Standard Oil and uh, and all those things, and then the AT&T breakup, uh, and then the opening up of the telco uh, of the telco uh, industry. That was the precursor to what then was necessary to build the internet. So it's sort of a mix of the two, but for certain there will be continuously new opportunities. And everybody use, every time you see somebody saying, yeah, yeah I'm here, I've done it, um, you should say, you're the next, uh, will topple down, because the next I will be, I want to be the one uh, to be in your place, and, 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 and rightly so. So in the end, uh, Zuckerberg did something uh, uh, that nobody had invented at some at that point, uh, and, and, and no, it's not that Google was done by 50 year old. Uh, they're just a few years, uh, they were a few years older than, than he was, and still today, everybody is building uh, something. Some of that something will be the next trend. Being able to rewind the past, what are the fields, or, or, or maybe most precisely, the ideas uh, that you now say, I should have build a startup with this idea in this field. I should have put my money, I should have invested there. I, 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 do you have some kind of regret? No, I have to say not really. Um, I've been uh, doing, a f I've not done 1,000 things. I think that if you do something uh, at least for me, it's true the fact that if I'm doing something, I get 150% absorbed into that. And I, it's like saying uh, if you're pregnant, uh, you're fully pregnant or not. And once you are, you're done. Uh, so if I look back uh, in the past, uh, I don't know, from 95 to now, it's what, 20, 23 years, 22? Uh, in almost every moment, uh, I've been doing something that, that was actually satisfying the requirement. I think I'm doing the best thing in the world. Sometimes it's been true. Sometimes uh, in some moment it's not uh, been true. Um, in some reason, in some cases, because it, it was not a so, so, so nice an idea. In some other uh, cases, because I was doing things like investing, that to me is absolutely a waste of time. That on my time, it's not a thing I like to do. Uh, but uh, no, there was not not space for something else I would have liked to do, and I missed uh, doing. And then who cares? It was just an idea. If you had an idea, you said I could have uh, followed up on that. Given that every idea I started with was completely different from the thing that ended up being. Uh, and given that inspiration is only 1% of genius and 90% of it is perspiration, saying, yeah, I had that 1% that could have become something. I don't know. I think it's uh, pretty useless uh, to think that way. So I don't do it. But I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just that it doesn't happen. How important is having the right team? How important are personal relations? How do you choose a traveling companion for your business, obviously? 
Oh, well, very important. It's not something you do by yourself. Uh, it's something you do as a team, uh, as a family, as a company. You spend so much time together, you could say way more than, than the amount of time you spend with your wife uh, and sometimes with your kids, uh, than your kids. So yes, it's very important. Uh, uh, you go through a lot of uh, very stressful moments. Uh, so, so in the end, uh, I think uh, if you if you survive uh, this kind of experiences, it means that you have created a very solid uh, foundation. I'm very proud of the fact that uh, there are many persons working to get today with me. Uh, some of them, or oh, one of them, is been working. Uh, I met him the first time in '95, and still is happy to see and, 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 and work uh, with me and, and challenge me or being challenged by me uh, after, what, 23 years? Uh, and, uh, and the same for a lot of other people uh, working with me. So I think the, the fact that we are still working together instead of saying, I don't want to see your face any, uh, anymore in life, uh, it's, uh, it's a testament that something very uh, very important happens when you create this kind of team and create the alchemy how and the do chemistry. You, how do you obtain this? Eh? Being able, how do you obtain this? Being able to work with someone since 1995? Well, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's either he's a masochist uh, or I'm a sadist. Uh, <laughs> no, apart from joke, uh, it comes out. It, 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 you never know. It comes out as something that can happen and uh, and then it, it works uh, but every day you have to bring more people in uh, as much as I'm uh, very happy because I've been I'm, I'm today working with a lot of people with whom I've done many other things in the past some of which are working together with me or uh, between them uh, and have done things by themselves in many other moments in life uh, interspersed with moments where everybody went his own way I think this is a very important uh, thing at a minimum I say I always ask forgiveness because I'm really picky and, and finicky and, uh, and sometimes an asshole uh, but in the end I think that if uh, if if you l if you work well together, uh, it means that in some way you are enriching one each other. And this is very important along, uh, along such a difficult journey as it is building this kind of things. OK. Thank you, Carlo. We, we have time for a couple of questions, and then uh, 